everybody, Coach Eric Rosa here, here with my good friend, Bo Santos, IFBB Pro Classic Physique. And uh, we're here at Elevation Fitness for a change. This is a great gym. We love to come here every now and again. Bo's been training here a lot lately, so we decided to go into his home turf. And this, this of course, is Merlin's Mind Over Muscle. Today, we're going to hit chest with Bo. We haven't done that yet. So um, I'm gonna probably beat you up pretty good, as usual. But the Do thing it. about Bo is, <laughs> This guy, the hardest worker in the room, always. He's ready for anything. Always ready, I don't care what I do to him, he loves it. The more pain I give him, the more he loves it. So we're gonna crush chest today. Hope you guys enjoy the show, and uh, let's do it. All right, for the uh, first torturous movement, <laughs> we're gonna do uh, Smith Machine guillotine press. So we're gonna be pressing down close to the clavicles to hit the upper chest. And the technique we're gonna use is both of change of speed and also negative. So the first five repetitions, Bo's gonna do a four second negative on each rep. Then he's gonna go from there to five quicker reps, no negatives, just down and up. Then he's gonna go back to the negatives again for five reps. And then he's gonna finish off with five or more quick reps, whatever takes him to failure. I'm gonna do that now. So come down high in his chest, just almost to the clavicles. And as you see, he's lowering under total control, he's taking four full seconds to get that negative. He's coming down just as low as is comfortable for him and his shoulders, and focusing on pushing with the pecs. Some people will be able to come lower, some not quite as low, depends on your shoulder mobility. And that's five. Now he's gonna go down and up, get a more of a pumping type motion, keeping the tension in the chest. And it goes back again, changing speed, back to these negatives. Of course, negative repetitions are amazing for igniting muscle growth because they tear apart those muscle fibers. Good. Good. Here he goes. Come on. He's got more. Six, seven, come on. Eight, nine, up, finish. Come on. Come on. Up, come on, push. Excellent. Okay, so for the second set of movements, we're going to do a superset. Uh, we're going to do one of my favorite movements for the upper inner pecs. I want to teach it to bow because it's very, very important for classic guys to have a lot of development up here on the shelf of the chest. So we're gonna do a low cable, close grip, incline press. We have done this on the show before, so you have seen it, but I'm teaching it to Bo, getting him used to it. We're gonna superset that with flat dumbbell flies, and on the flies, we're gonna hold the stretch position for a full four seconds. I really want Bo to keep the rib cage high, really open up the chest at the bottom. An amazing superset for chest growth. Okay, so as you can see, he's got a close grip on a V-handle. He's bringing it down just before he touches the chest and he's actually contracting and flexing the chest at the bottom so it's contracted throughout the entire range of motion. He's not pushing in a line straight up. He's pushing back overhead. A very, very unique line of push. And we're really, really focusing our energy here on the inner top portion of the chest. This does not take a lot of weight. This is more about focus, concentration, and getting the movement correctly, getting that line. Good. As you can see, it's going slow and controlled, up and down, making sure to really, really flex that chest hard throughout. He's trying to focus on squeezing with the chest, keeping the front delts and the tricep out of it as much as possible. Squeeze. Good. I'm gonna flatten the bench, I got that buddy. Thanks. Now these flies, mega important to do exactly what I wanted to do, which is to hold that bottom stretch position. The stretch position under tension is a huge trigger 
of muscle growth because it really, really tears down muscle fibers. It damages them. And as I always say, that damage has to be repaired. It repairs them getting bigger and stronger. So as you can see, it's coming down slow into control, getting to that full stretch position and holding it for the full four seconds. Yep, he's getting it nice and deep. And as you can see, the way he likes to do flies is he actually starts with the palms facing each other at the top, but then he rotates the dumbbells as he comes down. He feels more comfortable getting a stretch this way and hitting the shoulders, but he's not pressing the dumbbells. He is still flying the dumbbells. That's it, bro. Come on. Tear apart those fibers. Let's go. Come on. Get in there. He's through. That's it. Now he's going to work. This is when the pain really sets in, that lactic acid. Good. Come on. A few more, buddy. Deep stretch on everyone. Pull them apart. Good. Feel the fibers all the way from the sternum all the way into the armpit. Reach up. Good. Come on, a couple more. Reach through. Good, another one. Get your stretch, get your stretch. Finish it. Up, 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 up. Nice. Good job. Yeah. Okay guys, so for the next movement, uh, I'm using a seated chest press machine. Now I just want you to understand, I just want to say real quick that we don't always use so many machines all the time, uh, but a lot of these techniques lend themselves better to machines than they do to free weights because they, they need a lot of control and they need the, the constant resistance that machines and cables give. So I just want to say that. So what we're going to do with the seated chest press um, is another te technique I like to call negative pauses. So what we're going to do is, what I'm going to have Bo do is I'm going to have him press to the top, and then he's gonna come back about one third to almost one half of the way, and he's gonna hold that position for four seconds. Now, when he's holding that position, what I'm trying to tell him to do is to sort of, not just hold it there, but push just a little bit against the resistance to help the chest to remain activated. So he's gonna do that for four seconds, then he's gonna lower to the bottom and press back to the top. These are the first times that Bo has ever used the technique, so he's still learning them. But I know once he incorporates them into his routine, he's going to get more growth. Have him do that now. Okay, so as you can see, he's going to come back about one third to one half of the way and hold it in place for four seconds. And again, the key is not just to hold it there. Because if you just hold it there, you're just going to end up holding it with your arms. But what I'm having him do is not only think about holding it with the chest, but just very slightly pushing against the resistance to keep the chest activated while he's holding it there. And then he, after he holds it, then he comes back to full stretch and he muscles the weight out. He doesn't throw it out, he muscles it out. Very nice. Now all these techniques, they just give the body and the muscles different ways of having to handle the resistance. Too many people get stuck in doing things the same exact way over and over and over again. Your body's gonna stagnate. You have to make the muscles and the central nervous system deal with something else. All these little techniques, they will spur on new growth if you've been stagnated. Come on. Another great thing is, is that you don't have to use as much weight, so you save your joints. You don't get any injuries. You're just purely working the muscles. Come on, stay tight, push against the resistance. And press, good, come on. A couple more, come on. Let's go. Squeeze it out, good. Come on, hold. Down. Press. Good. Two more. Two more. Here we go. Hold. Hold with the chest. Stretch. Press. One more time. One more time. Here we go. Hold. Press. Press. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. And finish. Up. 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 Squeeze. There it is. Good. 
All right, so we're gonna finish off this chest workout uh, doing a cable fly. We're gonna put up our backs up against here, the support here. Uh, and what we're gonna do, since I haven't used a contracted position movement yet, uh, we're gonna hold that contracted position in the center for four full seconds. And what we're gonna do is called hyper contracting. So again, what that means, instead of just holding the weight in place, Bo will be actively squeezing his chest as if he's doing a most muscular on stage really squeezing his knuckles together, and that's the way you get the most out of the contracted movement. Very, very painful, great for the inner chest. So as you can see, it's coming to the center, squeezing the chest, and again, hyper-contracting, so he's actually pushing his knuckles together and flexing. He's not just holding it there. That's only half of it. What you really need to do is squeeze tight and flex. Even if you have to use five pounds less, 10 pounds less, it doesn't matter. You really want to work that contraction. You want to force those fibers to be contracted as hard as possible. Excellent. And as you can see, he's got great control on the negative as well. He's not just throwing it back. He's controlling the negative and then muscle into the center. Like I said, Bo's the hardest worker in the room. He's gonna kill this right to the end. Yeah. Come on. Let's dig now, come on. Squeeze. Come on. Here we go. Squeeze it. Four, three, two, one. Again, come on. Come on. Squeeze. Four, three, two, one. One more, come on. First place, let's go. Squeeze, bring it, bring it, bring it. Come on, here we go. Four, three, two, one, and done. Good. All right, so uh, that was a good workout. <laughs> I'd say that all of us are pretty, uh, even though you only saw Bo on camera, all of us trained today, me, Dave, and Bo, so all of us are hurting pretty good so uh Bo what'd you think bro what'd you think of that that uh that chest workout oh man uh probably some of the highlights were uh being able to connect with the upper chest something that I feel like almost every bodybuilder can benefit from right um so a couple new movements guillotine smith flat press really really uh started us off really yeah. connected started connecting early with the upper chest and then followed by uh, a variation of a cable uh, close grip press that also was activating the upper chest followed by some four second negatives uh, on the chest fly which uh, was just making the chest fire real early on strong. Uh, yeah, just, I mean, overall uh, fantastic workout. Yeah, I mean, you, um, I love to use, you know, I'm a big technique guy, everybody knows that. Um, I'm very big on you know, once you've been, obviously when you're a beginner trainer, an intermediate trainer, you don't really need too many crazy techniques. I mean, basically as long as you're using good form, you know, and you're getting stronger in each movement, you're gonna grow. But you know, once you become a little more advanced bodybuilder, you know, it's time to start bringing, thinking outside the box, you know? So I know that you love these these different techniques and you thrive on, on really feeling the muscle because you're somebody who trains very hard. Like you're, you, you push. Uh, a lot of people don't push like that, but I feel like um, I know that these techniques are the kind of things that you need because you know when you like when you're an advanced bodybuilder, when you're a pro, you know you you need things that are going to set yourself apart from other guys. So that's why I bring these techniques in, and I know that you really really love doing them. So um, so you love the you love the guillotine presses. You've love never that. done those before. Never done those before. Yeah, those are really great. Uh, for people who want to build the upper chest and maybe inclines aren't getting it done. Yeah. So I know you really connected with that. I'm glad that I showed you that uh, close grip uh, incline cable press uh, because that's really great to get that inner upper chest developed. Um, and I know you had a little bit of trouble with the, the chest press where we held the negative for four seconds in the middle of the rep. But then on the second set, you connected a little bit more when I told you just push it, put you against the weight and you felt it a little bit more, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so those little tricks, those, those little subtle tricks are what you need. Um, what do, what's up next for you? I mean, I know that you've been 
when we did our first training sessions, you were like really in the off season. Uh, now you're still in your off season, but you're a little bit more h hardcore into it. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking competition later this year? Or are you just looking to build the whole year? No, I, uh, from, from what I think we're on track for would probably be hard push off season. We're gonna push until July and then probably start maybe a 20 to 16 whip uh, week prep that will probably land me, land me somewhere in November or late October uh, around that time frame. I know there's a couple classic shows that I'm actually eyeing right now, given you know uh, that everything aligns as it should and uh, you know, God forbid any type of injury or any, any type of setback, that is currently the plan, so. What is your main goal? Like, everybody has something they say, okay, in the off season, I wanna improve this, I wanna improve this. Mm -hmm. Where's your head at? Is it just overall want more mass? Or is there specific areas of your physique that you're like, I need to bring up? Oh man, I mean, of course there's, there's areas that I need to bring up, but I also do feel like I'm lacking overall size. So, wherever I can put on the size, the better, because I need it everywhere. And I'm so far beneath my weight cap right now that everywhere needs to grow. Of course, I have places where I feel like, to me, and some of the feedback from the judges as well, where I do need to focus on, like my posterior chain, like back, through the hamstrings. I would love harder glutes. I would love uh, a little thinner skin through the backside. And that's you know something that I'm hoping to achieve, or at least make some improvements on it uh, from last year's showing. So. Do you find yourself when you train by yourself to always do the same routine or you change over time? Um, I'm pretty, I, I keep the same routine for a while. So wow. like, um, a lot of it is from, a, like I'll, I'll get like a, a program from my coach and I'll execute it for X amount of weeks. And um, yeah, and then I'm, I'm really just, you know, you give me a plan, I'm just gonna execute it until I'm told otherwise type of guy, so. So it's good when you train with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. You got, that's a, one of my favorite parts is because I get that extra push and then I don't have to think and then you're showing me new techniques and then all I really have to do is just Fine. make it work, yeah. right? Just work my ass off. Like that's that's my favorite part about everything, working. Yeah, I gotta tell you guys, I mean, we didn't, um, obviously he trained his ass off during chess, but we did a little shoulders afterwards, just, us, just the three of us because it was also front and side shoulder day for us. And there was just a couple of, things that we did where I was like he did like 15 on the first set so I'm like I'm gonna push him to 20 on the next set with the same weight and then I pushed him to 20 and then I was like all right good set and then he did another five on his own and I'm just like that's why I say Bo is the hardest worker in the room and I was even saying to him during his sets I'm like dude just outwork everybody every single day and it doesn't matter what your genetics are or what the other guys are doing if you're if you're giving 110 percent the way you are you're gonna keep improving and one day your day's gonna come you know, you're gonna keep climbing up the ranks and then all of a sudden, you're gonna find yourself at center stage and getting that first place trophy and you'll be on your way to the Olympia. So, um, you know, as I said, I love training this guy. I hope to have you on the show. Of course. A hundred more times, yeah, I swear. I love it. We have, we have a great time and yeah. we still, together, have not hit hamstrings and tries, so that's gonna be the next thing we'll do, one of those guys. Okay. So far, that's it, but, but we also didn't train uh, the only thing we've trained with him on full-time bodybuilding so far is quads, biceps, and chest. Right, right. So the shoulders too. Are very on, on full, not oh, on full-time. Full yeah, yeah, we did that right. on Muscle Fitness muscle Plus. Fitness, so yeah. We have a lot of body parts that to still go eye. through on full-time. <laughs> um, but anyway, got to hit some back on the show. We got a lot. We got a lot to we do. We got a lot to do. We got a lot. We to got do. time. We got a lot more work to put in. I'm yeah, excited for and, uh, that. And I want to thank Elevation Fitness for welcoming us here. Um, it's great. They let us, you know, come in, train Bo. Another great jam in Las Vegas for you guys to check out when you're here, for sure. Definitely. Great equipment, great people. And um, that's, all, that's all I got, guys. So, listen, I hope you guys enjoyed another show of Merlin's Mind Over Muscle. Uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel. And we'll, we'll see you next time.